the methodology adopted by the Bureau is absolutely, well, not just appropriate, but essential. Because, um, as we have heard, there are, they have identified approximately 68,000 signatures submitted by these people. And what the candidates tell us is, some are fraudulent, we don't know. In fact, some of the candidates have admitted um, that the signatures are fraudulent and complain themselves that they were defrauded, that they were victims, um, which um, is hard to stomach, quite frankly. It's their obligation uh, to check these signatures. But where, where we know, know that this many signatures have been submitted, for them to come in and say, well, there are just too many to be checked and therefore you have to accept them, that is unacceptable in my uh, estimation. I think that we have to rely upon uh, and respect, because it's sound, uh, the recommendation uh, of the Bureau with regard to these particular challenged candidates. My comments are that uh, these people should all go to prison and circulators that uh, defrauded candidates and defrauding us. I'm not prepared to shift any burden uh, to the candidates uh, today myself. Uh, we, we, we didn't have the staff to check all the uh, signatures that came in. Uh, we estimated 10%, whatever it was, it's less than 20% of these fraudulent uh, petitions collected. So uh, I'm not prepared to throw everybody off the ballot myself. In 2020, and frankly, multiple instances in recent history, uh, countless claims, uh, many would call them lies, have been made based on assumptions and conjecture regarding the outcome of the most recent presidential election. Individuals beginning at the highest levels with President Donald Trump use those assumptions and conjecture to pressure this body to at a minimum delay the certification of those results. Thankfully, this board, with two members who are no longer with us, rejected those efforts because there was not substantial evidence, in fact, there was no evidence to support those claims. In this instance, I will readily admit that far more serious efforts have been made to marshal evidence to support the claims being made by the challengers and the Bureau of Elections staff. However, just as depriving the voters of Michigan their choice for office based on assumptions is unjust, so is depriving them of the choice of the election itself without fully investigating the claims being made and providing complete confidence in the results. Without question, a widespread and disgraceful effort to defraud the voters of the state has occurred. Those who engage in this effort deserve the full weight of the law to come down on them. And I'm glad to hear that it's been referred to the Attorney General's office for further investigation. The burden of proof, however, to deprive citizens of their rights is wholly the responsibility of the government. I have repeatedly rejected the accusations that some have been making in this process that there is a conspiracy by the staff to deprive only GOP candidates of their access to the ballot. That's false, it's irresponsible, and it's unworthy of the people making the claims. The staff has done incredible work with the time and tools at their disposal, but this is an unprecedented level of fraud we don't have a lengthy body of work to rely on, best ways to handle this, and I cannot sign on to an admittedly novel process without reference in statute to disregard tens of thousands of signatures without confirming the validity of the signatures on file based on a fraction of confirmed frauds. I agree with my colleagues that this may perversely encourage additional fraud to overwhelm the system because there's not a mechanism in place to properly examine them. But, and I, I, I'm wrapping up here, there have been countless instances of innocent people being sent to prison based on assumptions that seemed airtight at the time, just as if we'd seen guilty people set free because the government failed to prove, to prove their case. I firmly believe the courts need to provide clarity on the conflicting passages that have been an issue here, and that my colleagues have rightfully pointed to as potential to justify their position. Um, in light of what was presented today, these campaigns had better get to work rehabilitating signatures and provide much more comprehensive information for the court than they've done here. And as someone who believes strongly and consistently in the rule of law, um, my conscience and intellect demand that I vote no on this matter.